This is Twit. Windows 8.1, Mini PC, Bay Trail M, and Bay Trail. So then we should probably say this, we're probably going to be talking about Intel Core M a lot today. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I don't know about today necessarily. The right. So, I mean, this this ECS Leva PC is based on Baytrail. It's Silvermont. It's the same thing that you found in uh, tablets and, and, and that type of thing. It is essentially uh, the same componentry that you would find in a, you know, 8 to 10 inch Intel tablet uh, right. running in a kind of desktop configuration, right? If you scroll down uh, and, and look at the picture of the motherboard, right, it has connectivity like an Ethernet connection to USB. One of them is USB 3.0. Uh, right. It is powered by USB, that little USB connector on the left there. That's the power supply input to this device. Uh, HDMI, VGA, passively cooled, totally silent. Um, but it is going to have some performance trade-offs, right? Because it is a Bay Trail-based device that most people or many people will try to run in a kind of traditional desktop environment, right? It does support Windows 8.1. If you scroll down even a little bit further on that page, you'll see a, a size comparison that compares the uh, motherboard to an SSD. And if you look at those, you'll very quickly realize that, uh, okay, it kind of puts things in perspective. It puts things right. into scale. Exactly how small this device is. Mm -hmm. um, and it's pretty impressive the functionality it has. It has, like I said, gigabit Ethernet. It has wireless uh, it includes a, a, an 802.11 in wireless card. It has 32 or 64 gigs of eMMC storage, which is, again, what you would find in a tablet uh, or phone form factor, giving you an idea, again, of the performance levels there. Um, but it does support Windows 8.1. And uh, after we published this, I think the day after, they actually announced a version using Windows 8.1 with Bing, which is mm -hmm. the free version of Windows 8.1 that Microsoft is offering up to builders that are you know, delivering these super low cost devices. Um, so you could even in theory get this with an operating system already installed or at least a license for an operating system already in it, um, which is which is which is pretty impressive, right? Uh, you know, per performance wise, it's a, an interesting discussion. Uh, it's not going to win any benchmarks. It's not going to. Um, well, it's not supposed to. It's, yeah, yes, exactly. Uh, but it, it has, uh, you know, it will it will run desktop applications. It will run your standard Windows programs as long as you're comfortable with what the performance level will be. For example, HD playback, video playback, right? Um, it will run 1080p in HTML5, but it doesn't run 1080p in Flash very well. Uh, it runs 1080p playback on MKV files as well. So, you know, kind of hence towards some of the inefficiencies of Flash, but also in the performance of, uh, of this particular device. Uh, wireless performance was good. Um, you know, power consumption was 3.2 watts at idle, 9.5 watts under a full load. Um, Modest. You know, web, web browsing on this is good. You know, you could, you know, gaming is not really an option. You could do, uh, I think Sebastian, who wrote the review for us, talks about, you know, you could do retro gaming if you want to play. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you this know, is a machine for Bejeweled if ever there was one. Uh, yeah. Also, I, I, I want to give a shout out to Sebastian for also pointing out that this could be a net top PC. And when I hear that, we're talking about, you know, home theater PC streamer. We're talking about basic desktop functionality because the, the vast majority of things we do on our computers these days in offices for most people do not require a smidge of the power that's available in like a Core i5, much less a Core i7 processor. Sure. Um, could this be used as a server? Is there any sort of ability to connect external large amounts of external storage on it? So it has a USB 3.0 port, but there's no SATA connections or anything like that. So you could connect to an external SATA, uh, you know, RAID array or even single right. drive. You could do that. Um, we also talked about uh, would this be able to handle or work with uh, and, and performance-wise be able to handle the uh, Infinity V um, uh, network-based tuner card, right? Where like maybe you have that hooked up on the network and this acts as the set-top box, but you didn't, then you'd have to have, you definitely still have to have some kind of external USB storage to actually record those videos too. And there, there, you know, you start getting into making things more complicated than just say, hey, why don't you just build a four or $500 computer at that point? Um, but... I mean, this type of computer, like, if, I think if you look at the last page, there's a picture, uh, like, he puts Ubuntu on it, and then uh, uh, he shows it running Lords of the Realm 2, which is some, you know, really, really old PC tile that plays fine on it. There's a, there's a picture of the <laughs> fractal design 
Core 3 3300 case next to the Leva PC. Right. Uh, and it it gives you an idea of kind of, of what kind of performance to expect based on what the size is. It, it's it's completely capable of running browser-based stuff. But sure. if you're the type of person that's going to have, like if I look at my, you know, Chrome right now, I have probably 20 tabs open with stuff. You're probably going to be hitting some walls with that. It, you know, remember it has two gigs of memory. Um, right. So there's, there's complications there. But I think it, it for me, it's $180. As it is, and I think the uh, Windows 8.1 version is like maybe ten dollars more, twenty dollars more. So for two hundred bucks or less, you can basically get a completely functional, ready to go PC um, that you can just kind of experiment and play around with, and, and see what neat things you can do with it as almost like a kind of a hobbyist tool, I guess. Uh, it, for for a company that had not released any device like this, really. It's, it, it has some cool stuff like that. USB powered and completely silent. Those are the types of things that, that make it stand out a little bit uh, from something like that's much, you know, like the Gigabyte Bricks, much more powerful devices, um, but use more power and are considerably noisy. So maybe you have this sitting behind a TV and, you know, you run Netflix on it. It should be able to do that just fine or, or HBO Go or something like that as long as you have a way to control it uh, remotely. It's interesting to just kind of think about what's going on in terms of it's, it's just the, the pro I guess it's like, you know, we, we're, we're used to seeing sort of laptop innards on the back of monitors or used for low end desktops or all in ones. And now we're looking at an even more sort of, I don't know, thinned out restrained version of that. I mean, I, I can't say does $180 sound expensive for it or cheap. Cause I'm, $180. I'm, um, yeah. You know, you're you're essentially getting a uh, a Windows tablet without a screen, right? Right, uh, and without a battery, <laughs> I guess. But uh, you're also getting with things more like software than you'd get on a Windows tablet, <laughs> right? 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 Uh, well, like I said, if you get the 8.1 with Bing, you you'll get you will get an operating system with it. Right. Um, I I don't think it seems like a lot of money because. It's probably on the edge, right? Because there are people that will be out there. It's like, well, if you spend $100 more or $150 more, you can actually build a full computer. And yes, absolutely, you can. It's going to be bigger. It's going to be bulkier. Uh, and it's not going to have the same flexibility. It's not going to be USB powered. Um, it's not going to be silent. Uh, and, and this is, you know, obviously, if this were $110, something would be awesome. If it's not quite Raspberry Pi pricing or size even, really. Um, but it's but, a lot more powerful. Yeah, it, and it runs x86, and it, you can just put Windows on it, and you can then experiment with the vast array of Windows software and web-based applications that are out there. So uh, I, I think it's I think it's worth a look if you're just kind of if you're if you think, man, it'd be nice if I had a computer to do this right here, and it's <laughs> not a very taxing uh, environment that you're looking for.